For USCFootball.com, I'm Keely Orr here with Dan Weber. Instant analysis, a Wednesday practice, a mock game week, and I think the most memorable or special part of practice was a special guest that uh, came to practice. Yeah, um, I thought I reckon they were on the other side when we first saw him. He was in number two, and then I thought, that looks like a Hammond on the back of that jersey. And as it turns out, it was uh, Taylor Hammond, who's been a real close to, I think, a lot of people on on uscfootball.com with his dad, Brian. And as it turned out, he um, he's a kid that's been battling leukemia for four years and has developed a relationship also with uh, uh, Kenichi Udezi because they both had the, uh, you know, the uh, bone marrow transplant. And On Kenichi, the same day. Uh, and Kenichi visited him, uh, uh, you know, when he w was going through that. And uh, so one of the things that... Uh, that Taylor has wanted to do is catch a pass from Sam uh, Darnold, you know, go to a USC football practice. So even though he'd gotten his results back, his last uh, tests, and he had to have a blood transfusion basically overnight. They were at the hospital in Las Vegas at three this morning. They got down here for practice and uh, it, it some really neat things uh, you saw uh, during the break. Uh, Sam is, you know, tossing to, to uh, Taylor and catching all the passes, and then uh, they came out. First play they ran, uh, Sam threw the ball a little high, but the second play was perfect, and Taylor gets to run, you know, like a 20-yard TD between, you know, and all the USC kids are behind him and in front of him, and he's eluding them, and, and you know, he can run. It, it's just amazing. He's in the hospital, you know, late, late, late last night, and he's out here running. And as Kenichi said, he's running 100 yards, uh, you know, after practice. And uh, pretty uh, pretty upbeat situation, as Kenichi said. Man, it, it puts everything into perspective. If, you, uh, if you're if you not happy about this or that, you got this little complaint or whatever. And as his dad said, Brian, he said, we're going to make the most of every single day because we don't know. We just don't know how many days you got. So if you got a chance uh, after getting the transfusion overnight to come down here today for this, that's what you do. Mm, yeah, we got a chance to meet Brian and Taylor. Such special people. I mean, they're such an inspiration. And Taylor was so cute. He said, I didn't know I could run that fast when he scored the touchdown. So it's just a great moment yeah, overall. I'm guessing he doesn't get a chance to do that. He was he can fly. It was pretty <laughs> neat. He had a, a Robert Woods jersey on, number two, but with his uh, with his name on the back. And, uh, you know, it almost went down to his, uh, his ankles. But uh, yeah, it, was, it was really cool. Uh, just a very... Very upbeat thing. I thought the U USC kids handled it really well. Mm -hmm. And uh, for everybody involved, I mean, he, you know, we saw him afterwards and he was just bubbling over. I mean, he just could not have been a better day. Same for his dad and, you know, the family, I think they, I'm not sure how many, they've got like six or seven special needs kids that they've mm -hmm. adopted. And it's just amazing uh, what kind of a family they, you know, they have. Mm -hmm. For sure. As far as injury update news goes, we didn't see Vianney tell him about today, as we expected. Um, but something that did happen was Andrew Voorhees took first team reps in that guard position for Vianney. Yeah, and Clay, uh, yesterday he had said, you know, Vianney's going to be out one or two days. Yeah. And today he said the rest of the week. Yeah. And so um, I don't know, you know, what this does in terms of um, you would think they wouldn't push Vianney real hard to be ready for the Western Michigan game, which gives, uh, and I think, it, you know, gives you some insight into how much they think of Andrew, that, you know, he was yeah. playing tackle yesterday. Today, he's with, the, you know, the first team at guard, and certainly, uh, you know, beneficial for him that he came in early last spring, but uh, he looks like he belongs out there. I mean, it's 6'6", 305. Uh, he just, you know, that looks like a, you know, good spot for him. How they work that, though, working Vianney back for the Western Michigan game because you really have to be able to be ready to block somebody the next week because you're playing Stanford. So that'll be interesting to watch how they how that whole situation evolves at right guard. Mm -hmm. Because it was his injury timeline got a little pushed back, should there be any concern for that whole game timeline? I mean, once you have, like you said, Western Mi Michigan, you have Stanford coming up, and that's no easy task. Yeah, so you don't want to see him push him to get him back for Western Michigan, but you don't want him necessarily going against Stanford as the first action yeah. of the year. So you would guess that they'll want him to get, you know, into the Western Michigan game, whether, whether they're going to push him real hard to get back, you know, to start for that game or, or how they're going to do.
do it between the two of them, you would think they'll share that. Andrew and Vianney will share that position. And it'll, it'll be interesting to see then how that carries over for, for Stanford. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty interesting challenge, uh, you know, for a freshman, uh, you know, first time starter. But uh, the, uh, they really think a lot of, of, of Andrew and of Austin Jackson. I mm -hmm. think those two, they, they think a lot of all, the, all five freshman offensive linemen. But those two are kind of in a special place right now. We continued the freshman interview tour, if you will, today. It was a defensive day, and we got to talk to the big guys, Brandon Peely, Marlon Tuipolotu, and you definitely got to talk to them. Do they have anything interesting to stand out to you? Well, it's interesting how soft-spoken they are. They're all kind of these really just quiet, sort of very, you know, they're not your stereotypical, you know, uh, fire-breathing, you know, defensive <laughs> linemen. They, they sound more like offensive linemen, uh, but, uh, you know, Real serious kids, thrilled to be here. Uh, I think Brandon, you know, a kid that knew that you're probably not going to get the exposure of the competition when you're growing up in Alaska, and, and he, you know, moved to the States, uh, you know, for his last year, was kind of an under-the-radar kid. I mean, when you hear about him, and he told me, absolutely, he can dunk a basketball, you know, off one leg at uh, now 340 pounds. Um, but, uh, you know, he... How he kind of was missed, I think, by a lot of the national recruiters and and didn't have that kind of, and maybe a little bit like Sam Darnold was, you know, a little bit. He hadn't gone to all the camps and, you know, he didn't have this big reputation. But, uh, man, kid can, uh, kid can play. And Marlon is this just, you know, super serious kid that takes notes and wants to be good. And, you know, he's just thrilled to, to you know, to have a chance. And, you know, both of them just talking about how, how pleased they are, you know, to be at USC and feel like they, they made absolutely the right decision. And uh, it's fun to, fun to talk to those. And then Levi Jones, uh, here's a kid, dad, you know, won a Super Bowl, brothers are in the NFL, Texas kid who decides, you know, I'm going to USC. Just seems, uh, you know, again, another kid just thrilled to be here. Um, and they're also appreciative of the kind of, uh, coaching and teaching that they're getting getting from the older players and they it's a theme you just keep hearing over and over about you know the older guys are taking care of me the older guys are helping me and uh it's pretty neat to keep hearing that mm -hmm. going forward the schedule is a little interesting for us because this was actually the last day we get to see the team practice for a while tomorrow's gonna be a closed practice sa uh saturday as well and an undisclosed situ uh, location so the next time we'll see the team is on tuesday leading up to actual game week yeah, I mean, you think uh, no Thursday, no Friday, no Saturday, no Sunday, and no Monday, I think. Yep. That's like five days. So, uh, so yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, normally, you know, they go with a game schedule. Normally, we get to see them on Saturday, so it breaks up. You know, yeah. we don't see them Thursday, Friday. Saturday breaks it up, then you don't see them Sunday, Monday. But since it's not a real game and it's uh, an NCAA rule, that if you practice off your campus, you can't publicize it, nor can you have the media cover it. It's just one of those that falls into that, you know, dark hole, you know, where there's just, you know, they're gone and we can't uh, can't stay with them. So it's, it's kind of gives us a break. I don't know if it gives mm -hmm. them a break, but, uh, but then we'll be back. And next week is for real. And mm -hmm. they, you know, what, what happens next week? Because you can see they're getting ready for Western Michigan to some extent. But what they're going to do next week, it's not just for some, to some extent, it's the real deal. Mm -hmm. So uh, it'll be interesting to, to see how that works. It will indeed. Also, a little note, if you want to come down to the USC Village tomorrow, me, Dan, Shotgun, um, Ryan, and also Clay Hilton will be there tomorrow during, uh, we're going to do like Facebook Live, maybe a podcast. So if you want to head down to the village, we'll be in front of Trader Joe's and you can catch us there. Um, any last thoughts? Yeah, Keith Rivers and okay. Khaled Holmes mm -hmm. will both be there too. So uh, a couple of, uh, uh, you know, former Trojan players. And uh, so it should be a fun time. And if you haven't seen University Village, what a great opportunity. Yeah. And, and we understand the, the parking in the garage underneath is free. Mm -hmm. All right, that's going to wrap it up for Mock Game Week Wednesday practice. For Dan Weber, I'm Keely Yor. For more, check out uscfootball.com.